This evening, I want to take us uh, through a few portions of Scripture as we examine one of the most powerful principles that we can see, uh, that we can apply in our lives as it pertains to warfare, right? And um, this evening, we want to look at that principle. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Chronicles, Second Chronicles chapter 20, and we'll read a few verses of Scripture from Second Chronicles chapter 20. When you have it, say amen. Second Chronicles chapter 20, we'll read from verse 1 and 2, and then we'll skip down uh, to verse 20 through 25. Here, Jehoshaphat and the children of Judah came up against a multitude of people, an army that was... A, a joint army. And these people outnumbered Jehoshaphat and Judah. They actually came up and they were going to destroy Judah. And the word declares that initially Jehoshaphat feared. He was afraid. But then he sought the counsel of God. And God told him exactly what to do. And the advice given was a strange one because we're talking about a, a battle. We're talking about a military might here. And what he was saying, that your warfare strategy, your strategy to win this battle is to set before the army, not cannons, not, not any sort of military uh, artillery, he didn't say send the, 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 the fighter jets in. He didn't say send the parachuters. He didn't say send any sort of military might. What he said to do is to set before the army some people to praise God. And that, brothers and sisters, as simplistic as it may sound, was his strategy for their victory. As simplistic as it may sound, you just set people to praise me, your heavenly father. It sounds so simple-minded. Lord, what about all this nice military plan and, and tactics? And what about sitting down with the council of the, uh, uh, of, of the elders and the governors and the generals and, the, and, the, uh, and all these, these high soldiers? What about you leading me and telling me a good battle plan, a good battle strategy? He said, no, that's not what is going to win it. What is going to win the battle is when you develop an attitude of praise unto the God of your, of your people. When you develop that attitude of praise to the true and the living God, let me tell you something, the battle shall be won. You see, brothers and sisters, we have gotten accustomed to praising God when the battle is over and we have won. We have gotten accustomed to praise God when we see the victory, when we see it tangible, and when we are able to hold the elements of victory in our hand. We can praise God with that. We can praise God for what he has given us. And that's not bad when you can say praise God for what, what has been done. In fact, brother, uh, what I can say is that, that gratitude is just that. Praising God for what he has delivered unto us. But faith, my brothers and sisters, <laughs> is praising God in the midst of the battle. It's praising God before you enter into the battle. When the trouble is on, before you see the victory, faith tells you that God is going to bring it to pass so that you raise a praise, you raise a shout unto the true and the living God because you know without reason or without, he is going to come true for you. So that Jehoshaphat learns this principle that before you go into the battle, raise a praise unto God. It may seem crazy. It may seem mad. It may be see seen insane. But guess what? It brings the victory. Even though you may look like you're mad. Real mad. Because you sing and praise unto God. And your marriage going through. And you singing and shouting hallelujah. Anyhow. 
You get in trouble on the job, but you're singing praise in spite of it. The pressure in you. They want to put you out, but you singing praises unto the Lord and you glorifying the heavenly host because of what he is about to do for you. Let me tell you something. That next dimension of faith is what we got to enter into, brothers and sisters. That our lives must demonstrate the praises of Almighty God in spite of. Tell your neighbor, in spite of. Tell your neighbor, in spite of. In spite of how it may look. In spite of what they may say. In spite of what they may do. You're still praising God. Let me hear anybody who could praise God. Shout a praise unto the King of Kings. Because you know that the battle is not yours. But the battle is. The battle is. The battle is. The battle is. When you look at that story with Jehoshaphat, brothers and sisters, they did not have to lift a finger in the battle. The enemy came and fight against themselves. They pulled on each other. And when they were trying to pull you down, what God was doing is was setting up ambushments against them. They don't know who they come up against because one man and God is a majority. They come with all the armies, but they didn't know we had the army of God on our side. One man and God is a majority. So that when you go into a battle, brothers and sisters, no matter how much of them come up against you, you can stand up without reason or doubt and say, Hallelujah. Anyhow, we got to practice our praise. We got to sing praises unto God. We got to lift up a shout of praise, not from the head, but from the heart. Let it come from here, brothers and sisters, because it's a shout of faith in Almighty God. I remember Paul and Silas. You remember those two soldiers of God? They imprisoned them for preaching the gospel. They were imprisoned. And when you're in prison, you may be sad. You may feel discouraged. You may feel downcast because you're trying to do the right thing. You believe that you're doing the right thing, but they come and persecute you. All the time, for years, you're living as a Christian and you're doing the right thing. But then they lock you up. They throw you out. They disown you. They tell you, I see you. I've taken you off the well. You leave this religion. You was born in this religion, you're supposed to be dead in this religion. But you say, oh no. And you leave them and they start walking the right path. But it's persecution after persecution after persecution. They call you all kind of bad name. They tell you you're going to church just to find man or woman. They tell you all kind of thing wrong with you. You're only in church because of this and because of that. They lock you up or they lock you out. Paul and Silas, they locked them up for preaching the gospel. And the Bible declares, the word of God declares that at midnight, instead of crying, instead of weeping, instead of being sorrowful, instead of, 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 of being adopting a pity party, they started to sing. They started to praise unto God. And the word declares that as they praise the Lord, we got an earthquake taking place because they started to praise God. God started to rumble the earth. You see, brothers and sisters, when we start to praise God, the earth shakes. When we start to praise God, we affect the earth. We affect the world. We affect the very presence that we stand in. When we start to praise God, something happens. When we praise God, something happens. Something moves. The word declares that the earth quakes. Let me tell you something. Somebody here, they already start shaking up the place. Somebody already start making comments because you're praising God. There's a shaking taking place. And what the word declares, that as the earth shake, brothers and sisters, the gates of the prison opened up. And Paul and Silas, they received their emancipation. What? They received their freedom. 
They didn't have to wait for any president pardon to get freedom. They got a king of kings to open the doors. Because they started to praise something moved. Say something moved. You know, like you're pregnant, something moved. You see, brothers and sisters, when you really and truly, when we adopt that attitude of praise, we change circumstance and situations. And things move. It moves. The earth quakes. The earth rumbles when you start to praise God. And things that was bolted down becomes loose because of the praise that God positioned inside of you. When you rise up with praise, there's something that is about to loose. There's something that is about to give way because of the praise in you. No matter what it is that is holding you bound, no matter what it is, you can start praising God and changing the circumstance. Let it break free as you praise the Lord. Say praise God. Say praise God. Say praise you, Jesus. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah is the highest note of praise. Somebody say hallelujah. Think about whatever circumstance you are faced with now and just say hallelujah anyhow. Come on, praise the Lord, somebody. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the 61 verse 3. One is a, a verse that Jesus himself quoted. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me in verse 1. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach good news or good tidings unto the meek. To, he sent me to bind up the broken heart. Did you all remember that scripture? You all remember when Jesus spoke it? He sent me to bind up the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prisons to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. To the comfort, uh, to comfort all that mourn. Verse 3 is where we want to look at. He appointed unto them that, mo that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes. Say beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. And the garment, joy? We have joy there. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of what? The garment of what? For what? For the spirit of heaviness. That they might be called the trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. Here the word declares... That he has given unto us the garment of praise for the spirit of? For the spirit of? There are so many people even within the church who have a spirit of heaviness. Heaviness is a spirit. You feel so burdened down. You feel as if this, that, that all these circumstances and situations that we face is too much for us to bear. Too much for us to carry. A spirit of heaviness. There are some people who the enemy has assigned into our lives to bring on to us a spirit of heaviness. To cause us to feel depressed and oppressed and that we can't move. You just want to stay in your bed and sleep. Spirit of heaviness. And what he said, he gave us the garment of? The garment of? So that when we put on this garment of praise, it breaks that bond of heaviness that is upon us so that even though we are putting on something, it is easing our burden. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He has given us the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Of course, he gave the oil of joy so that we can be happy. We can smile. We can laugh. We can frolic. And we don't have to be downcast. You see, the ashes represented mourning. When you were going through a time of sorrow, you would be in sackcloth and ashes. You would be in that place where, you were, you, that place of solitude, where you could cry all by yourself, where you could, you could be sorrowful all by yourself. 
Do you and your sackcloth? That sackcloth was, was old, tattered clothes that you wouldn't really walk around the place with sackcloth. And you wouldn't entertain people in the ashes. That ashes was for your personal time. Where you will cry. Where you will go through all that heaviness. But what he says, he don't want you to stay there. So what he will give you is the garment, the clothes, the jacket of praise. You see, praise, brothers and sisters, is what you put on when you're ready to come out from that time of mourning. When you're ready to come out from that corner of ashes, you put on the praise so that other people can see that in spite of the circumstances, in spite of the debt, in spite of all that has been going on, you could still raise a praise unto the king of kings. The garment is for other people to see too. When you put on the garment and you walk out of that room or walk out of that sorrow time, it is because you have recognized that the morning has come to replace your morning. He says, weeping may endure for the night, but what? But what? But what? Because you start to put on the garment of praise, joy comes in the morning. Joy comes to replace your morning. You understand what I'm saying to us? That we no longer remaining in the ashes. We no longer remaining in the corner of pity party. But we're rising up against that. And we say, Lord, I'm lifting up a praise unto you. Because praise looks good on me. You put on a garment that looks good on you. Nobody likes to see a sorrowful person. Anybody like to see somebody always sad? and sulking, and sorrowful. Look at your neighbor. Tell me if they're looking good. Look at your neighbor. Look at the person next to you, or on the next side. See if they have a smile on their face. See if they're looking sorrowful. If they're looking sorrowful, tell them to get up and praise God, because God has given you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Let me tell you something, when we get into that attitude of praising and thanksgiving to God and we develop that as a habitual routine, guess what? You're going to have a bounce. You're going to have a pep in your step because guess what? You're not allowing anything to bring you down. You're not allowing any devil to come and steal your joy because you know that weeping may endure for the night but now is morning time because the sun of righteousness has risen upon my life. Let me tell you something. It's time for us to arise. Tell your neighbor, arise and praise. Say, arise and praise. Say, arise and praise. Say, arise and praise. You may look mad, as I say, but praise God. Say, praise God. Say, praise God. They will call you white van for you, but say, praise God. Because no matter what they do, they can't stop you from shouting. They can't stop you from shouting and praising God because your victory is in your praise. No matter what we do, brothers and sisters, no matter what come up against us, the most important thing that we can do is praise God. Because praise changes our circumstances. Why it changes our circumstance? Because the word declares... That God dwells, he inhabits the praises of his people. So that when we praise God, we invite him into our circumstance. We invite him into our presence. We say to you, Lord, come and deal with this matter. When we praise God, we are acknowledging his ability to change what we are about to face. You understand what I'm saying? God does not necessarily withdraw us from the battle, you know. Even with Jehoshaphat, you recognize that God didn't send him back home. He still went out on the battlefield. But what happened? The victory was in God. And many times when we face a battle, brothers and sisters, we, sometimes we withdraw. And we say, you see me, I don't want to face that now. But what God has done in allowing us to face the battle is to set us up for the victory. I don't know if you got what I'm saying. 
that the only reason God allows you and me to face the battle is because he has a victory in store for us. Somebody didn't get that yet. Because if you know you have a victory, you're going to shout and say, praise God. You're going to shout and say, hallelujah. That in the midst of what you're going through, you know that God is going to pull you through. It's not going to be a bad ending for you. Sorry for who come up against you because the victory is in you. Why? Because the king of kings lives in you. The word declares, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So when you stand up and you face the challenges, you can lift up your hands. You can lift up your head and say, thank you, Jesus, even before you face it. Because you know definitely that you're winning this one. You know that you're winning it. That in spite of the challenge, in spite of how great they may appear, in spite of how long they're in this thing, you know, it has some people, they season in this fighting thing. But in spite of that, brothers and sisters, you're coming true and you're saying, Lord, I stand in with you. Lord, I put my trust in you. Lord, I thank you for the victory. When Christ stood at the tomb of Lazarus, Lazarus was dead for four days. Four days. He was already dead. And the sister said, when the Lord said, open the tomb, he said, but Lord, he's thinking. You understand? But the first thing Jesus did, after he said, roll the stone away, he said, thank you, Father. He started to give God praise. You know why? Because he knew that God cannot do it. He knows that it has already been done. But he said thank you because he wanted the people to see and to understand that God has the power to do it. You see, when you put on that garment of praise, it tells people that you are testifying of God before the victory has already been won. You're boasting about your God. You understand what I'm saying to us? That before we even enter in, we start to boast about God. God don't allow us to go through things on our own. Many times we face battles on our own when we decide to stand on our own. But when we stand in God, brothers and sisters, we are never alone. And we'll never lose. Tell your neighbor, I'm not a loser. Tell your neighbor, I'm a winner. Tell your neighbor, I'm a winner. Because I have God in me. Let me tell you something. You are not going to lose. And you have to position in your mind that I am not going to lose. No matter what you face, no matter what circumstance you come up with, at the end of it, there is going to be a victory for you. You know why? The word declares that all things work together for good to them that love God and they that are the called according to his purpose. Let me tell you something. Once you stand in the purpose of God, once you stand in the love of Almighty God, once you stand knowing that you are called by God, you are the elect, you are the ecclesia of God, the called out ones. Once you stand in that position, brothers and sisters, any circumstance that comes up against you is going to work out together for good. At the end of it, you will have the victory. No matter what they plan, God is going to turn it around for good. People will come up against you. And they will try to put things against you. Somebody talk about, about these people putting spiritual things against them. And let me tell you something. My word declares me that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. They could go to Haiti, they could go to Guyana, they could go to wherever and get whatever. No weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. Nothing. Nothing. Say nothing. Say nothing. Say nothing. Say no weapon. So let me tell you something. I have no fear because no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. And even if they look like they're winning, guess what? God has something in store for me when one door closes and another. Let me tell you something. Looks are deceiving. Tell your neighbor, looks are deceiving. That is why what God has called us upon is not just to depend on our natural eyes. Because what we see could deceive us. But when we open our spiritual eyes and the eyes of faith, guess what? We see in things that don't even exist. 
Because you have faith in God. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things. So that you have evidence that nobody else sees. And guess what? It is substantial evidence. When God sent, when God said to Jehoshaphat, you go forth. Everybody, the people came with news that Jehoshaphat, you're going to lose, you know. <laughs> because the enemy that is coming forth, let me tell you something. They are more than you. They outnumber you. But guess what? He had to stand in faith and know that what he is seeing is not only what exists. You see, brothers and sisters, on your side, there is an encampment of angels that wherever you go, they're going. And wherever you face, they're facing. And the good thing about that is your enemies who come up against you, they don't see them. So that when you're fighting, it's not you alone fighting. You have a host of angels fighting with you and defending you in battle. And that's why we ought not to just take over and say, okay, well, I go fight this one and I go fight it through. No, no, no. You go ahead and fight. They will stand back and say, okay, well, you go ahead. You want to run things? You run things. But when we leave it up to God, and we stand, we hold our ground in faith, and we start to praise God in spite of what? The enemies will be defeated by that heavenly host that comes to defend us, that stands with us. No matter where you stand, brothers and sisters. You know what David said? Even if I make my bed in hell, you are with me. You know what that means? No matter who come up against you, the devil himself can come up against you. The word declares that God is on your side. And once you know that God is on your side, what you have to do, brothers and sisters, what we have to do, once we know that God is on our side, once we face any circumstance or challenge, is praise him. Because we know, hey, Lord, you're here already. And just his presence makes a difference. You know why? Because what the word declares, that no enemy, no evil thing can dwell in the presence of God. So that once you know that the presence of God is here with you, you've got to just praise him because you know you win the battle already. But if you know that God not with you, then I will smoke your pipe. Our boast, brothers and sisters, is not in ourselves. Our boast is not in our own ability. Our boast is in God. And that's why when we stand and we praise God, in the midst of our circumstance, we have the victory because he brings it to pass. You're thanking him already for what he has already done in the spiritual but has to be manifested in the natural. You see, the victory that Jehoshaphat won was already completed. All that was awaiting now was the manifestation of it at that time. And so too in our lives, brothers and sisters, we have already won the battle. All that is necessary is for us to praise God about it so that it will become manifest in our time. Because before the foundations of the earth, God knew what you would be facing. And he knew that he had set it up. You know what the word declares? He says that no temptation that we, that we face is strange. God has already made a way of escape. He has already made it. All we have to do is thank God and enter into that way. But when we allow ourselves to adopt a different kind of attitude and, and try to struggle and try to fight it out on our own, that's when we're going to get loose. That's when we're going to um, lose the battle. But once we understand that praise in God opens our eyes to see what has already been manifested. When we start to lift our praises unto God, what happens is that we take our minds off of the circumstance and focus on God. When we praise God in the midst of it, we take our eyes off of it. We take our eyes off of what is going on. The problems, the challenges, we take our minds off of that and focus on God. And that is what brings us through and brings the manifestation of that which he has assigned us to. Let me tell you something. No battle is too heavy for us once we are on God's side. 
And once you stand on God's side, when you face battles that seem to be heavy, all you need to do is put on that garment of praise. Put on the jacket. Put it on and stand. Lift up your hands and say, Hallelujah. Anyhow, the crazy praise brings great victory. The praise that seems to be mad brings great victory. And once, what I have recognized is the harder the battle, the more difficult it looks, the more aggressive the enemy comes, when we win, the victory is sweet. The victory, sweet, sweet. Tell your neighbor, it's sweet. And this sweetness is not like the Calypsonian sweetness. Eh? <laughs> Let me tell you something. When God does it, he does it good. In fact, he does it real good. And we don't have to worry and we don't have to fight and we don't have to complain. When God does a good a job, he finishes it completely. When people come up against us, we can stand in that promise and understand that once we continue to praise God, once we continue to thank him, you don't have to, let me tell you something, we don't have to fight and, and beat up ourselves and study how this will happen. And all you need to do is lift up your head and say, God, I thank you. Father, I thank you that it's going to work out. Father, I praise you and I worship you. Just adopt that attitude. Just say, thank you, Jesus. Everything, my wife will tell you almost everything. I sit down in the car, say, thank you, Jesus. I start, I say, thank you, Jesus. I reach home, I say, praise and thank God. I reach home safe. Everything, you thank God because our life must be praising God. In fact, when, when we got called, let me tell you something. In Philippians, uh, in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, he says, we are a chosen generation, a royal person, a, holy, a peculiar people, a holy nation, and all these things. You know why he called us? The next line is, to show forth the praises of him who called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. The reason that we have been established in God is to show forth the praises of God. So that that's why we must stand in, in praise. So that we cannot afford to just allow ourselves to adopt a heaviness. But let's put on that garment of praise and glorify God in every circumstance and every situation that we face. The victory is yours. It has already been won. All we have to do is praise God for its manifestation. Bow our heads and close our eyes. Hallelujah.